What's up guys? Today we are making the viral Pinterest cake. Look at this heart-shaped beauty. Is she not the most stunning queen gorgeous cake you've ever seen? So for the past few years on my birthday, I've really enjoyed taking cute Instagram pictures with a cake. And this year I thought, why not give it a go and attempt to make this cake by myself? So if you have no idea what you're doing and you wanna learn how to decorate a cake just to make this cake, this video is for you. Quick disclaimer, this cake, she is not a real cake. This is a styrofoam cake. The only thing I'm not gonna show you how to make in this video is the cake itself and how to tear the cake. But if you wanna learn how to make the fake cake that's inside of this, I will show you that today. Before we get started with the actual decorating, I'm gonna explain to you all of the different cake decorating supplies that you're gonna need and what they're for. Because if you have no idea what you're doing, it, you're, you don't even know what to buy. Firstly, this is basically a piece of like plastic cardboard. You can get one that's like a legit cardboard, but this is just what the cake sits on. This might be one of the more expensive things of this project, but this cake stand that rotates, it just makes it so much easier when you're decorating your cake to be able to turn it and frost it at the same time. Next, you're gonna want something to be able to put frosting on the cake. I already had both of these at home, so I used both of them, but you don't necessarily need both. I would say for me personally, I found this more useful than this when I was decorating the cake. These are especially useful when you're icing the entire cake. So I use this for this cream colored frosting here to scrape this on. These are disposable piping bags. These are only a few dollars, so they're pretty cheap. But if you're in a pinch, you can use a Ziploc bag as well. That is what I used to do, but personally, I think just buying these piping bags is worth it. The piping bag is shaped like this and a Ziploc bag is shaped like a, like a square, like a 90 degree angle. So when you're piping, this is much nicer to hold than like a huge, like, bag. Then for piping tips, in this video I used three different tips. So if you're just starting out with cake decorating and you don't want to invest too much money in it, the design I did today is absolutely perfect because it'll keep costs low. There are a lot of fun cakes on Pinterest that are really pretty but they use maybe like six or seven different tips and then you're gonna have to buy all of those. They're not super expensive to buy the tips but it also requires more skill to be able to use all those different tips. So definitely keep that in mind if you're planning on using a different inspo pick and doing a different cake than what I'm doing in this video. These are what the icing tips look like. They have big ones like this and small ones like this. To attach your piping tips to the disposable bags, you're gonna want something called couplers. These are super old, so the packaging might be crusty. But as you can see, they are pretty inexpensive and they are so necessary when you're decorating a cake. This makes it so easy to change what piping tip you're using on the bag instead of having to squeeze your frosting out put a new piping tip in a new bag and transfer the frosting to a new bag. This $2 will be the best $2 you'll spend on this project. Because I used two different sizes of piping tips in this video, two small ones and one big one, you're gonna need two sizes of couplers. One for the big one and then maybe two for the small one. And those are all of the cake decorating supplies that you're gonna need to make this cake. I don't have my own buttercream recipe so I used one online. I used American buttercream. There's all different kinds of buttercream recipes out there but I like American buttercream because it crusts over after it dries. I made this cake four days ago and I didn't even put it in the fridge. Keep in mind it is cold and dry where I live right now. It has preserved beautifully. I can literally touch it and nothing comes off. This is great if you wanna make a fake cake. However, if you are eating your cake, it might not be the yummiest frosting, but if you eat it right away, it should be fine. I just chose this because since I'm taking pictures with it, I wanted it to be a little bit more durable and in case I bumped it, I didn't want to ruin the cake. So anyways, enough with the talking. Let's get into how I decorated this cake. Usually to decorate a fake cake, people will buy what's called a cake form or a dummy cake, and it's basically a big block of styrofoam in the shape of a cake. I had my mind set on having a heart-shaped fake cake, and for the life of me could not find one. I checked Hobby Lobby and craft stores and my local cake specialty store, and none of them had one. They only had circles and rectangles. So I decided to cut my own out of styrofoam sheets and then stack the hearts together to make my own dummy cake, and it ended up being a pretty cheap project actually it was only six dollars which is about the same price as a regular cake form and it only took me 30 minutes Shh. 
Here is my beautiful icing. Before I start messing with it anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and build my cake because I forgot to attach all of the layers together earlier. I'm gonna use these like skewers. Oh, that did not break like anything how it needed to. <laughs> what? Come on. Oh gosh, I don't even know. I've got little pieces still though. Try to break this better. Gosh, what is up with these? Maybe I'll just cut some of these frayed edges off. And then I'll vacuum them because I'm so afraid of getting splinters, guys. This is the most raggedy way. A little trim. I'm gonna put this little cake, I forgot what this is called, on here, and then we'll put the cake here. But first, our icing. This is my frosting, and as you can see, there's air bubbles in it. So what you wanna do to help get rid of those air bu bubbles is to kind of like smear this frosting around the edge of the bowl to kind of press the air bubbles out. You don't want air bubbles in here because when you're piping your icing and you have air bubbles come out, it'll ruin like the texture of your design because your design will be like bumpy. Or the worst thing is when you have a big air bubble and then you'll have like an explosion of like frosting on your cake. This is definitely easier to do when you're standing. I'm sitting because my dog is on my lap. Face this way. See? <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit of frosting on the spatula. So I need to center this on here. It's okay if you don't get it perfect on the bottom because we are gonna line the bottom with like frosting. Okay, so after like half an hour of doing this cake, I'm finally done frosting this like outside layer. Then I'm just gonna wipe off any excess that I may have gotten on this board. It is not 100% perfect, but it's good enough for me. Plus all of the edges over here are gonna be covered in like frosting anyway, so I was really making sure that it was just clear in the middle. If you have stuff that is poking out and you use American buttercream, you can kind of like poke it back in and it won't really stick to you unless it's like not all the way dry yet. This is my reference photo, but there's a ton of different pictures you can choose from if you don't have an idea of what you wanna do yourself. I'm gonna use two shades of pink, a darker pink and a lighter pink, and then a green shade for the leaves. So it looks like the darkest pink is gonna need the most frosting. I'm always scared of running out of the color because then you can't mix another thing of the same color because it's gonna be not exactly the same shade. Baking is so messy, like I just find frosting in random places. I just bought this food dye from Target. I'm gonna go a little out of time because I don't want my colors to be too dark. And again, like we did earlier with trying to get the air bubbles out of the frosting, I'm gonna mix it that same way. So now we are almost at the most exciting part, decorating, but first we have to fill our piping bag. So if you got the disposable ones, they should look something like this. It is sealed all the way to the end. So you need to take your coupler. There's two pieces to the coupler. This is the one that goes inside the bag and this one goes outside and screws on. First, you're gonna take your coupler, put it inside of your bag and take note of where the ridges are. These are the ridges that that little ring screws onto. The ridges start up here from the top, so I'm gonna cut a little bit above that. I'm just gonna snip a little so I have like a mental note, and then I'm gonna cut the tip off. Then I'm gonna put the coupler back through, and it should fit snugly like this. See how the plastic doesn't go all the way to the ridges yet though? That is personally how I like to do it. And the icing tip is gonna go on like this. And I like to do it so that way the plastic 
from the bag is inside of the icing tip as well. To secure the piping tip onto the bag, you just take this ring, slide it over, and then screw it shut. I have to fill a bag. I'm gonna take a vase, but you can also take a mug, any sort of large container, and I'm gonna stick the bag in and then fold this over. And then I'm gonna scoop it and put her in. For this color icing, I'm gonna be using the most of it on the cake. So I used a bigger piping bag than those little disposable ones that I bought. But if you don't have a bigger one and you only have small ones, don't fill it up all the way because you might end up having too much frosting in the bag and then it'll leak out of the top of the bag. So I'm gonna show you guys. See what I mean about icing being everywhere? So when you start piping, you wanna practice on a plate first. If you use a plate or something and not like a napkin, then it's really easy to use something like a spatula to scrape it up and put it back in the bag so you're not wasting any frosting. And I'm gonna give it a little twist so that way, just an insurance policy. This is how I hold it. First, I'm gonna show you guys how to pipe shells. I've got a star tip on my icing right now. And to do the shells, squeeze frosting out and push and as you're Dragging down, release the pressure from the frosting bag so that way you get a point like that. I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna push forward just a tad into the previous shell and then release the pressure on the frosting bag as I'm pulling down. You can play around with how much pressure you're using to push and drag and that is how you do the shells. The first three, since I was going slow, I didn't use quite as much pressure, so I don't know what that was. The first three, I wasn't using as much pressure, so they're a little smaller. The last three where I was going a little faster, you can see they have a little bit more of like a movement to them. Depending on how slow or fast you go, you can get different looks and how much pressure you use, but just be consistent whatever you're doing and your cake will look great. You can also pipe other designs. I don't know what they're all called, but I know how to do them. So this one is where you go around and then you loop around the opposite direction and then you loop around this way. It's kind of like you're making a bunch of like eights a little bit and it comes out looking like that. Real quick, I'll show you how to change icing tips. I'm gonna squeeze the frosting away from the tip a little bit. I'm gonna open this up and take out this icing tip. Put this one in. For the direction of the piping, I've seen people pipe all the way around like this on the cake. But for this heart, I've also seen people go like this and I kind of like how that looks better. So we're gonna give it a shot. Okay, we've started falling a little flat there. I don't know if I should scrape and restart. This side is definitely going better than the last, probably because I'm a little bit more practiced now, but that's okay. Ah, uh, that bothers me so much. I don't know if you guys can tell how flat that is compared to the rest of it. Oh, I hate it. I am lifting up just a tiny bit just to get some volume on the shells also. The ending wasn't quite as pretty as the last one, but we're gonna, we're gonna say it's good. Don't be afraid to go slow also, like last time I made a cake. I, I was going so fast because I had been watching all these TikToks of like people baking and they were either sped up or they were just really good at decorating cakes and so they were going really fast and then I started going really fast and it definitely lowered the quality of my work. Also when you're doing this, if you can, pay attention to the distance that you made the bottom one so that way your top ones at least come out like kind of the same. Oh, that one came out kind of funky. Okay. 
point. She looks so cute. So I'm gonna try and be careful not to dive into these shells that are on the bottom and like smush them with my piping tip. When I was in middle school, I actually took a cake decorating class with one of my friends and shells were my absolute favorite thing to do. Okay, I'm getting a little sloppy. Okay, that looks absolutely amazing. So my inspo pick had this adorable ruffly banner going around the sides of the cake and unfortunately when I tried it my frosting kept falling off of my cake and breaking apart and this is because I had let my buttercream sit out at room temperature for too long and it got soft and I could have combated this by putting it back in the fridge to let it harden up a bit but by this time it was 9 p.m. and I was just ready to be done with this cake. So I went ahead and switched from my ruffle tip to a small round tip and decided to pipe streamers around the cake instead of a band. My frosting was a little bit soft for it still, but I made it work. Now, time to pipe bows. Could have done this in the darker pink actually, and it would have been cute. But it's too late now. I put 25 on this cake when I'm turning 24. <laughs> you just scrape it off? Oh, thank God it's coming off. And that is how I made this absolutely stunning cake. Here is the final product. I hope you guys enjoyed watching how I made this cake and I hope this video was helpful to you, especially if you have no idea what you're doing. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all about making this cake or if you made it and it turned out beautifully. I would love to see pictures of it if you post it on social media. The well's been kind of dry up here in terms of video ideas, so I think I'm gonna start making like a bunch of different Pinterest like viral things on here and doing tutorials for them. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and comment and let me know what videos you'd like to see me make. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.